Hey guys, Augie Saint here and welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are doing a fantastic day and I want to share with you guys my Mantis Blade Cyber Psycho build guide. It's really fun and that's coming from me. I don't even actually like melee builds to begin with. This is my first time trying out a melee build. I have actually rerolled my character twice because I messed up the skill points and every time I play I would see something I'll be like oh I think I could change this up and you know just optimize a little bit better. So this is after like two to three times of replaying through the beginning of Phantom Liberty with the pre-made character. I've actually finally built this guy out after the, over the last couple of days. And I'm going to share with you in this video everything there is to know about this Mantis Blade Cyber Psycho. I just want to give you guys a shout out. Thank you so much for all the support on the last Cyberpunk video. Well, my first Cyberpunk video actually was the Smart Tech Runner. You guys actually just blew that one up. It's almost at 10k views. Now we've got over 100 something odd likes on that. Really insane. I really appreciate the support. So without further ado, let's hop into my Mantis Blade Psycho. We'll start out again with the character tree. This is how we have spec'd it out. Now I will have this in a build planner down in the description for you guys to so go ahead and follow it through there. But in yeah, I'll just give you a few pointers to actually go through. So when you're, ever, when you're starting out, first of all, all your damage really comes from reflexes over here. This will give you most of your damage and then this will give you your dashes and stuff. Just really good for mitigation and mobility. Early on, depending on your difficulty, I would say you definitely want to get your damage on the right side of here in the reflexes tree. But if you are playing on very hard, then you definitely want to come and get these straight away as well. Just all five of these perks in the body tree, as this is going to give you a lot of health regen and stuff that's really useful for playing on very hard. And then get this stuff later on. And then the next thing I would say is your technical tree. Come up the middle you have to grab edge runner because then you can actually get a lot more cyberware installed and this build does rely quite a bit on cyberware and then this on the left hand side yeah if this is really just for grenades health regen and health items and stuff i would suggest to pick this up last so fill out this last on your technical tree and then in the other trees we don't really have anything i just added that road warrior stuff i pretty much got all the road stuff the road warrior vehicle things because i had like three or four points left over that I just there was no way to really put them and the reason I have intelligence at nine instead of putting it all into cool is just because we have so much crit damage and everything anyway I can get more out of which book is it this one the renaissance punk where you get four plus cyberway capacity for each attribute at nine or higher and obviously if we have them all at nine or higher then we're just getting a little bit more of cyberway boost so that's what our skills look like and then we'll just go have a look at the cyberware. This is a big one. As you can see, they have a massive cyberware thing there. And I also have a load of armor. You really want to try and get as much armor as you can. As you are going to be up close and personal and taking a lot of damage to the face. So we'll start with our operating system. We're using the Apogee Sand System because you can activate this. And you can deactivate it anytime and it like keeps the charge. So you can activate it, deactivate it. There's a few little optimizations to this when you are in the finisher animation you can go ahead and deactivate this just to save a little bit of time as well as you kind of have like an iframe when you are in the finisher moves and you really want to try and get finishes going as much as you can because it does benefit some of our skills and things with finishes as well as if we go to the relic tree of here with the jailbreak one you want to pick this one up as soon as you can with mantis blades dismembering an enemy or performing a finisher with mantis blades will charge the next leap attack a charged leap attack with mantis blades has 30 meters longer reach and deals massive damage so you definitely want to try and hit your finishes as much as you can and you can charge like really far where you can see a little video jumps so far it's really good to get that so back to our sand everson it's just going to give you some damage there and obviously killing stuff will extend the duration it does have a max duration over there of eight seconds but like i said you can activate it and deactivate it whenever you want and then we are using the cockatrees in our optics over here just for the increased crit chance as well as the melee damage on the hands you can actually level up the tiger claw tattoo and it does eventually give you melee damage once you level it up so that is why i did it because i just seen it there and i was like what if i actually level this up what what happens with it because you start off with the one at like tier one or whatever it is it's like the white normal version and then i leveled it all the way up and it actually gives 7.1 percent melee damage that is massive so you might as well pick it up and level it up as well and it doesn't cost you any cyborg so another good thing over there for our circulatory system we're using heal on kill no brain edge is giving you healing and the melee damage as well you really want to try and get as much melee damage as you can and then we go with the bio monitor over here to automatically heal you within equipped heal items when your health drops below 35 percent so it's like your get out of free jail card if you're really low and you don't realize it it's going to heal you up as well as giving you health and health regen bonus and on health item recharge speed as you want to use your health item as well because it's going to give you extra health for your cyberweight capacity 
as well as it's going to chunk over into like give you that little yellow bar on your health bar and then for your tendons you want the reinforced tendons just for the double jump i feel like that's the best in my opinion it's the one i always pick on pretty much every build and then it just has melee damage into it as well for our integumentary systems i can't english we're going to take shock and awe for the massive amounts of armor it's giving us as well as just giving you that electric shock to enemies around you it does give you armor in the bottom perk as well then we're picking up Chitin again for massive amounts of armor, health regen and health. Just overall defensive stats on that one. And then we are grabbing nanoplating as well just for a 7% chance to block incoming projectiles. As well as a bonus chance after performing a dodge or a dash. And with this build you really want to be dashing a lot. As that was something I was kind of not optimizing at the beginning when I was learning how to play this. Like just getting used to the whole melee playstyle. You do have to utilize your dash. And with perks and stuff I think it's in reflexes. Yeah all of these dash gives you so many things you get mitigation from your dash you get increased dash range you get stamina after killing on a dash you get more mitigation in midair and improves your uh, midair maneuverability as well as giving you stamina after performing air dashes and double jumps so it's really important to actually dash around over the place and then obviously that just does fuel into it and then for our nervous system we're grabbing stab over there this is for crit chance and melee damage for our reflex tuner we're getting the slow time when your health drops just as another little helping if you do get low so you got a chance to pop your health items as well as giving you increased health then we're going with our adrenaline converter over there for some movement speed when you enter combat but we only really take is for the melee damage on the bottom line and then on your skeleton you definitely want to get dense marrow as it's going to be massive amounts of melee damage as well as stamina cost reduction and melee damage resistance not that you really matter and then armor as well in the bottom there and then for these you don't really need these but they do add a lot of armor. I added the bionic joints over there just for melee damage as well. And then for your mantis blades, you can use whichever ones you want, the normal ones. And then there is actually these special ones, the max tech mantis blades. There is a few guides up on the internet on how to actually get these, but it's basically a quest in downtown. If you want me to make a video for you guys, I will make one for you guys as well. You can also get it if you progress further down in the Phantom Liberty storyline without giving any spoilers but yeah just progress through the story and there will be a, it's kind of missable but if you want to know more about that i'll make a video and then i'll explain both ways to get it in that video as well with the spoilers but we're not going to spoil anything in this video so there's the max deck man display the only real difference is this one gives you a little bit of health regen from defeating a bleeding enemy and all enemies will be bleeding because of your mantis blades having innate bleeding chance as well as our skill tree so we're going to come out of there so that's your mantis blade and then for our frontal cortex, we're going with the axolotl. It's just giving you some cooldown reduction on your cyborg stuff, as well as melee damage. So you really just want to stack as much melee damage as you can. And then that is really it for the character. We've got our character, we've got our cyborg covered. And then you can use a blade as well. I just have this errata equipped, the fire one, as well as the Tigon. This is a new pistol from the expansion. And then as well, the Hawk, you do get this as well. But I barely ever use these as I'm just running around with my mantis blades and just deleting everything in my path. As well as trying to give yourself a head armor with armor and then a body chest with army as well. These both give you 100 armor so it is nice. It's like adding pretty much a whole one or two cyberways added extra there. And then you can go with EMP grenades as your only real weakness will be turrets and things. But I mean you just run up to them and deactivate them or destroy them. But if you want go with EMP grenades you can really just use whatever grenades you want. But because of the way we have our thing set up here, where is it technical, I believe, on the left here, we have a lot of cooldown with grenades and stuff, as well as increased size and everything like that. So you definitely want to be utilizing your grenades as much as you can. So slow time, as I usually like to do it as soon as I finish slow time or like I run out of slow time, I throw a grenade there to like back up and then reposition myself because it kind of knocks enemies down a little bit sometimes. So that's what I use as like a breather so I can get my sand ever stand back online with the cooldown and then slow time again and just go back at murdering everything overall really fun build let me know what you guys think of this one and next i might do a sneaky sniper or like a sneaky pistol build or maybe even a throwing knife build let me know what you guys would love to see and i will go ahead and play through and try and see what i can come up with thank you guys so much for all the support and watching this video if it liked you please drop a like and a sub to the channel helps me out so much and i'll catch you beautiful people in the next one augie say now Run free and dive into the sky Hear the